हरे कृष्णा ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओ नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओ नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय चिप्ट सेवन द सन ऑफ द्रोणा punished uh, verse 19 to 20 to 38 uh, text text 20 athop athop pushya salilam salilam sandhati tasmahahita ajananna pisaharam prana kuchha upasthiti since his life was in danger he touched water in sanctity and concentrated upon the chanting of the hymns for throwing nuclear weapons although he did not know how to withdraw such weapons text 21 tata pandu pandu krutam teja prachandam sarvato disham prana apadam vi vi abhi preksha vishnu jishnu uvacha there upon a glaring light spread in all directions it was so furious that arjuna thought his own life in danger and so he began to address lord shri krishna then 22 arjuna uvacha krishna krishna mahabaho bhakta nam abhayankar tvame kodaya mananam ap Vargosi Sansute. Arjuna said, O oh my Lord Krishna, you are the almighty personality of Godhead. There is no limit to your different energies. Therefore, only you are competent to instill fearlessness in the hearts of your devotees. Everyone in these flames of material miseries can find the path of liberation in you only. Thanks, 23. ियल एनर्जी यू हेव Sorry, you have cast away the effects of material energy by dint of your spiritual potency. You are always situated in eternal bliss and transcendental knowledge. Hare Krishna. Six twenty-four. Sa eva jiva lokasya. माया मोहित चेत मेटीरियल एनर्जी यू एक्सिक्यूट द फोर प्रिंसिपल ऑफ लिबरेशन करेक्टर करेक्टराइज बाय रिलीजन एंड सो ऑन फॉर द अल्टीमेट गुड ऑफ द कंडीशन सोल्स इनकारनेशन टू रिमूव द बर्डन ऑफ द वर्ल्ड एंड टू बेनिफिट योर फ्रेंड्स स्पेशली दो आर योर एक्सक्लूसिव डिवोटीज एंड आर कॉन्स्टेंटली रैप in meditation upon you kimidam svik kimidam svakruto veti deva deva naveda ab amayam sarvato mukham mayati teja param na adharunam o lord of lords how is the how is it that this dangerous effulgence is spreading all around where does it come from 
I do not understand it. 627. Sri Bhagavan Vaja Swa Brahma Astra Vadakshitam Neva Shove the Sangharam Prana Bada Upasthite. The Supreme Personality of God had said, Know from me that this is the act of the son of Drona. He has thrown the hymns of nuclear energy Brahmastra, and he does not know how to retract the glare. He has helplessly done this, being afraid of imminent death. 628. Na Astra Pratya Vakashanam. O Arjuna, only, only another Brahmastra can counteract this weapon. Since you are expert in the military science, subdue this weapon's glare with the power of your own weapon. Next 29. Sutva Bhagavata Proktam Falguna Pariviraha Srutasvatam Parikramya Brahma Brahmastra Sandhati. Sri Sutta Goswami said, hearing this from the personality of Godhead, Arjuna touched water for purification, and after uh, circumambulating Lord Sri Krishna, he cast his Brahmastra weapon to counterattack, uh, counteract. The other one. Sahantya, Sahantya Nyonya, Puyaste, Puyaste, Tejas, he said a salute, Aurutia rode the sea kacha, Brorutato, cover he won. When the rays of two Brahmastra combined, a great circle of fire, like the disk of the sun, covered all outer space and the whole. Uh, Permanent uh, firmament of planets. Drasta stages to the Yostri, Lokana Padam, Ahman Hatha, the Yamana Praja Sarva, Sarva the Karma Asanta. All the population of the three worlds was scorched by the combined hard, uh, heat of the weapons. Everyone was uh, reminded of the uh, uh, Samvartaka fire, which takes place at the time of annihila uh, annihilation. Next 32. Prajopada Vama Lakshya Loka Vyakti Karam Chatam Matam Cha Vasudevasya Sanjara Sanjaha Arjuna Dayam. Thus, seeing this disturbance of the general uh, populace and the imminent destruction of the planets, Arjuna at once retracted, uh, retracted both Brahmastra weapons as Lord Sri Krishna desired. Tata Asadya Tarasa Darunam Gautami Sutam Barbadhama Satar. Raksha Pasum Raksanaya Yatha Arjuna, his eyes blazing in anger like two red balls of copper, dexterously arrested the son of Gautami and bound him with ropes like an animal. 634 Sibiraya Nines Nini Santam Raja Padva Ipum Balat Arjuna after binding uh, uh, Aswatthama, Arjuna wanted to take him to the military camp. The personality of Godhead Sri Krishna, looking on with his lotus eyes, spoke to Arjuna in an angry mood. Meena Partha Harsitra Tru. Brahma Bandhu Mima Jahi, you serve Sava Anagosha Suktana Dimini Jalakan. 
Lord Shri Krishna said, Oh Arjuna, you should not show mercy by releasing this relative of uh, Brahmana, Brahma uh, Bandhu, for he has killed innocent boys in their sleep. 636. A person who knows the principles of religion does not kill an enemy who is careless intoxicated, insane, asleep, afraid, or devoid of his chariot. Nor does he kill a boy, a woman, a foolish create, uh, creature, or a uh, surrendered soul. Svapranaya para prani praprushna atyaduna khala tadata stasya hi sriyo a cruel and rash person who maintains his existence at the cost of others' lives deserves to be killed for his own well-being. Otherwise, he will go down by his own actions. Pratisrutam cha bhavata pranchali sruvatu mama ahari pi Furthermore, I have personally heard you promise Draupadi that you would bring for, uh, for the head of the killer of her sons. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much, Mina Mataji and Pramila Mataji, for the beautiful recitations. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Let me check and see if Manu Prabhuji has joined us. Hare, Hare Krishna, Krishna, Manu Prabhuji. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. So I'll make you co host now, Prabhuji. Okay, Prabhuji. Thank you. Om Namo Bhagavate. Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Narayanam Namaskritya Nadam Cheva Narottamam Devim Sarasatim Vyasam Tadojayam Mudiriyet Shavatam Swakata Krishna Punya Shavana Kirtanaha Hidiantas Tohya Badrani Vidunoti Suhit Satam Nasta Praya Swabat Rishu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Shloke Bhakti Bhavati Nashtiki. So today we are reading from Canto 1, Chapter 7, verse number 20. We recite the verse. We'll go through the transliteration, word by word transliteration, and share for us per word. Ato pasprasya salilam sandade tat samahitaha ajanan napisangharam prana krichiri upastite. Ato pasprasya salilam. Sandade tatsmahitaha Sandade tatsmahitaha Ajanan api samharam Prana kachir upastite Atopas precious halilam Sandade tatsmahitaha Agyanam api samharam Prana kachir upastite Synonyms Atha thus Upas precious Touching in sanctity, salilam water, sandade, chanted the hymns, tat, that, samahitaha, being in concentration, agyanan, without knowing, api, although, samharam, withdrawal, prana, prachare, life being put in danger, upastite, being placed in such a position. Translation, since his life was in danger, 
he touched water in sanctity and concentrated upon the chanting of the hymns for throwing nuclear weapon, although he did not know how to withdraw such weapons. Purport. By his divine grace, Srila Prabhupada, Srila Prabhupada ki jai. The subtle forms of material activities are finer than grosser methods of material manipulation. Such subtle forms of material activities are effected through purification of sound. The same method is adopted here by chanting hymns to act as nuclear weapon. Om Ajnanam Timirindasya Gyanan Jana Shalakya Chakshuran Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Guru Venam Shri Chaitanya Mano Bhishtam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Sarpadantikam Vandeyam Shri Guru Shri Utapadakamalam Shri Guru Vaishnavam Shri Shri Rupam Sagrajatham Sahagana Ravunathan Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadhuvaitam Savadutam Parijana Sahitam Shri Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Badam Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakhan Vitam Sita E Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagatapate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostate Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi, Shri Radhe Vrindabhaneshwari, Prishubhanu Sate Devi, Pranamami Haripriye, Mancha Kalpata Rubhyascha, Kirpa Sindhu Vaivacha, Patita Nam Pavnebhyo, Vaishnavebhyo Namo Namaha, Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya, Prabhu Nityananda, Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi, Gaura Bhakta Vrinda, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. <coughs> so once again, we're reading from Canto 1, Chapter 7, Verse number 20. This, this chapter is entitled, The Son of Drona Furnished. Son, son of Drona punished. And the verse once again. Atho pasprasya salilam sandhade tasamahitaha agyana api samharam pranate chera pastite. So, who is the son of Dronacharya? We all know from the episode of Mahabharat that his, his name is Aswatthama. Dronacharya. He was a, a very learned Brahmin who knew the art of weaponry. The Brahmins were not supposed to fight themselves. In the Varna Ashram system, which is created by Krishna, Chatur Varna Maya system, Guna Karma Vibhagasha, by the Gunas, the qualities and the karmas, the occupational duty, Krishna has made the society into four Varnas, four ashrams. And one of the Varnas is Brahmin. So Brahminical culture is such that one would stay happy with what one receives and do not chase the material goals, material desires, rather focus on the studies of the scriptures. One part of the scripture is also called as Dhanushastra, Dhanushastra. So with this knowledge, Brahmins acquire the knowledge of uh, weaponry, weaponry knowledge. Um, so, um, Dronacharya was, um, he was positioned to train all the Kauravas and Pandavas hmm, in the kingdom of, at that time, ruling king was Dhritarashtra. And Asatthama, was born in the Brahminical quality or Brahminical culture. And thus, <clears throat> he was given the science of weapons. He was given the science of weapons. So here it is mentioned, you must be hearing from the previous verses from the other, other speakers, that how Asatthama 
was chased by Arjuna when he did the most heinous act of killing five innocent sons of Pandavas who were sleeping in the camp in the night on the last day of the Mahabharata Yuddha war when Duryodhan assigned Asatthama to become his chief senapati or chief lieutenant. Okay, my sound is echoing here. Let me just check. I hope everybody is muted. Okay, it's gone now. So, Dronacharya, uh, when Asatama was, uh, um, he he was given the order by the king or the first by by the by Duryodhan that go and get the heads of Pandavas. Instead of getting the heads of Pandavas, the Dronac uh, this Asatama went ahead and. He massacred the entire camp in the night. He massacred the entire camp, including the four children who were sleeping calmly. And when he brought his son's heads to Duryodhan, Duryodhan said, bring it closer to me. And he wanted to press the head. And when he pressed the head, the, pre the heads pressed easily. So he said to Asatthama, what are you doing? What have you done? You have brought so much of shame to me. You killed the children of Pandavas, not the Pandavas. These heads cannot be Pandavas' heads because Pandavas' heads are so strong. Even if you put hammer on it, they will not press. But these heads are pressed by just my hand's fist. So they are children's head. Even Duryodhan, who is sin personified, he is feeling ashamed of this act which was done by Asatthama. Mm. This Asatthama fell from his position of Brahminical qualities completely in the want of taking revenge of his father. In the want of taking revenge of his father, he fell from the Brahminical position and he started to chant his mantras to release the nuclear weapon. So I was reading this interesting fact. I was hearing on Prabhupada's lecture where he was saying that how there are gross senses, then there's a mind, and then there's intelligence, which is above the mind. Of course, the mind and intelligence, they both are very subtle. And subtle is more powerful because everything happens in the mind. And then it is manifested. And my, subtle is also very swift. It can reach to anywhere and everywhere. And I was thinking that uh, what could be an example of subtle which is material. Mm. Even the mind is material, so to say. Intelligence it can be also material. Only soul is completely spiritual. And when the mind becomes purified, it becomes spiritualized. Um, so these are subtle material elements. But what else is there in our day-to-day -day life which is very subtle these days? So um, I was talking to my father and we got this very nice printer and most of us have it now, which is wireless printer. You give you a command on the application, you download a mobile app and you give command on the application and you will see how the printer starts to scan. And then you give command from a distance, it starts to print. It also is, is enabled in such a way that even if you are sitting in another country, another part of the globe, you give a command from there, as long as it is connected with internet, it will still print out on the physical position wherever that printer is placed and it provides it's on and there's paper in it. It will scan, it will follow all the commands that can, they are controlled by the um, app. Nowadays in our houses, we see how we are able to control electricity from the app which buttons to be switched on, which electricity, which room has to be illuminated, which has to be darkened, many other functionalities, all wireless. There is no physical connection at all whatsoever. So what is that ethereal, um, ethereal existence? So there is an ethereal existence in which you can, uh, we, you can interact and engage with material. Hmm? So we can see from these examples, just by, the, by writing certain codes, these codes are written 
on the material platform. And when these codes are executed, they're getting executed in ethereal platform, giving us an output in the material platform again. It's such, it, it is quite a mysterious, mysterious thing. If I bring somebody 60 from 50 year old generation or 30 year old generation, like I was talking to my father, he was very surprised. How is it possible that you can print from a distance without having any physical pressing of the button? How is it working? It surprises. Of course, in due course of time, you get used to it. Receiving a phone call on the phone in itself is an example of such a such an ethereal existence. So there, there are coders who are writing codes and it all gets translated in certain type of output and you get it, it gets executed. So Sri Prabhupada is, was saying in the lecture that these mantras, they are very powerful. And to develop our faith, he was pointing out to an example of a snake charmers. And he was giving an example of his own experience. The snake charmer, he opened his basket, there were seven, eight snakes, but none of them are biting. And then somebody pointed out that, no, no, they do not have any uh, poison in them now, or their teeth are taken away. But the snake shaman said, no, no, they have their teeth, they have their, they have their wish or poison, but they will not bite. Why will they not bite? He said, because I've controlled them by mantras. And Prabhupada gave example, in the olden days, when the snake, they'll bite, these snake shamers by the power of the snake mantra, they will call the same snake back to the place where he, he, he had bitten. And then that particular snake will come and suck out the poison from that person and that person will then survive. If they can do it in time, in such a way that the poison has not spread in the entire body, that poison can be extracted and person will completely survive again. It's quite amazing. We don't see these kind of examples especially in the West, absolutely no. But in India, it's also becoming rare. By the time Mr. Prabhupada was on the planet, he was quoting examples from his childhood, from his adulthood, how he has seen these snake charmers working. Uh, he also gave example that in Mayapur, there were many snakes and you know there were uh, some Muslim snake charmers. They knew the art of chanting the mantras to control the snake. So he pointed out that these mantras this is sound vibration. And this sound vibration has cap capability, a subtle capability to form, to form subtle weapons, subtle weapons, very, very powerful, subtle weapons. Because when the sound vibration is chanted, it's like codes or software programming. Mm? It has an impact, there's an output. So if one learns the science of weaponry through mantras, he can evoke the energy of the universe in such a way that can get activated and can produce a desired result. In this case, this Asatthama, he, he feared his own death. And when he feared that, he chanted the mantras by touching the water. Water, we spoke about it last time, I had a similar verse, where Vyasadeva was chanting mantras. Mm -hmm. He was touching the water. The water functions as purification, purificatory. It's a purificatory process. And when you chant Gayatri, when you chant, uh, when you offer prashadam, when you chant Gayatri, when you, when you want to chant Maha Mantra, we can always chant Om Keshavaya Namaha. We, we chant our mantras, right? Om Keshavaya Namaha, Om Naranaya Namaha, Om Madhavaya Namaha, and there are plenty more. But these are three basic minimums we chant. And we look at the water, it is said that you must look at the water when you're chanting these mantras, Om Keshavaya Nama, you chant and look at the water because by the penetration of eyes, by looking of the eyes, this mantra is, is getting act, is activating the water. And by the activation of the water, the water, when we sip the water in, in, the, uh, in that way, it purifies our sound. Om Keshavaya Nama, Om Narayana Nama, Om Madhavaya Nama, these are three mantras that I speak to invoke purity. And then when we speak the Gayatri or when we speak Maha Mantra, the sound is purified. So there's an implication of every mantra. Then there are mantras which are material mantras. These material mantras have, have such kind of, now in this case, it was nuclear weapon. Mm. But you can, there are so many mantras in the Vedas. If one 
perfects those mantras, he can achieve um, mystic siddhis. He can he can have so much of power through these mantras. In this in this way, one can acquire. This is not considered spiritual at all. They are all under the realm of material universes. These mantras cannot bring anything from the spiritual world at all. They are not connected to the spiritual world. They only bring uh, the power, potencies and powers of this material realm. Mm -hmm. All these practices, you can obtain anything from anywhere, or you can go to the sun planet through the rays of the sun, like that, and you can become lighter than the light. In that, in that way, you can acquire so much of these mystic siddhis. And there are mantras, putra prapti. Hmm? There are so many mantras by which you can achieve your material goals. They are Vedic. They, this is a Vedic way of obtaining your wishes and desires. And if somebody wants to do ashwamega yagya through standing so many mantras, you can get the post of Indra. Like that, there's recommendation in Vedas. If you want this, do this. If you want to do that, want that, do that, like that. And Vedas has written all of that. And we know from the pastimes of Narad Muni and Vedvya conversation that Vedvya was not very happy about all of this. And when Narad Muni told him that you have told all about the all about um, the four uh, uh, Purushartha, hmm? But you have not thought about the love of God, and that is why you are feeling discontent, and that's why he started to put the Srimad Bhagavatam together. Dharma, Artha, Kama, Moksha. These four things can be obtained by these mantras. So, but um, there's beyond, there's, there's life beyond that also. And before we go there, these mantras, specific mantras, are designed for specific people. And Although Asatama was born in a Brahminical family, he lost his Brahminical culture altogether. And we understand from chapter 18 in verse number 61 of Bhagavad Gita. Um, sorry, that's not the one. Uh, yeah, it's uh, chapter 6, verse number 6. Oh, not this one as well. Sorry about that. Uh, Yeah, chapter 18, verse number 42. That's the verse. In this, word, in this chapter, Krishna has explained all the varnas and ashrams and the qualities. So he's mentioning the qualities of Brahman. And you would have heard this lecture if you have heard some Brahman initiation ceremonies or if you've heard some lectures from Sri Prabhupada. It's a very, 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 very highly quoted and popular verse. Sama means peacefulness. So I'll refer to a beautiful lecture by Shri Prabhupada on this. He's speaking, this lecture is speaking on a Brahmin initiation on the May 25, 1969 in New Vrindavan. And he's quoting this verse. And he's saying that to become Brahman means satyam and socham. Satyam means truthfulness and socham means cleanliness. Cleanliness internally and externally. External cleanliness by bathing, uh, by soap and water, etc. Internal cleanliness, your thoughts must be cleansed by the process of meditation. So um, then he says, Satyam Sacham Sama. Sama means equilibrium of mind without any disturbance. So mind has to be an equanimity. What does that mean? That you are able to um, you are able to, to be in complete um, balance even in a very difficult situation. And this situation when uh, Asatama was challenged for his life, he lost that balance completely. Mm. Then he says Satyam Sacham Sama Dhamma. Dhamma means dumb. You have to apply control. Dhamma means controlling the senses. Hmm? Sama Dhamma Satyam Socham Sama Dhamma Titiksha. Titiksha is tolerating. But tolerating what? Tolerating material anxieties. Hmm? Tolerating 
the heat and cold, the opposite uh, dualities of this world, happiness, distress, and Prabhupada specifically mention, mentions their seasonal changes. And we are living in England and we see there is no sun. Many times, long days, short days and long nights and uh, day after day, week after week, many times we don't get to see the sun. And that's seasonal changes here. Sometimes there's snowfall and uh, not so hard, but England uh, does get heat in, in, in uh, some part of the years. So one has to tolerate all of this. This is what Brahmanical quality tells us, that one has to tolerate. Satyam socham. Satyam means truthfulness. Socham means cleanliness. Satyam socham sama. You have to be equilibrium. Dhamma, controlling the senses. Titiksha, tolerating. And then it says arjavam. Arjavam means simplicity, which means no duplicity. Baba is explaining that no duplicity. What is in there my, in my heart is outside. It's not that I'm thinking something inside, I'm speaking something outside, I'm doing something else. That's not Brahmanical. Brahmanical means complete, simple life, simple in living, simple in thought process. No duplicity. Simplicity. Arjavam. Then it says Gyanam Vigyanam. A Gyanam Vigyanam means Gyan means acquiring knowledge, but Vigyan means when you apply that knowledge, then you are able to do some practical and have some realizations of that. I was hearing, I was, I was on that squandesiretree.com website and they have quoted an example of Gyanam Vigyanam. For example, if somebody is really hungry and, and out of hunger, he presses his stomach or belly against a, a big pillar. He gets some relief for some time. And then he again leaves that pillar and then he feels the pain again and he goes and catches that pillar again. But he's still hungry. And somebody from the other side is offering this person nice, beautiful um, prashadam of fruits and, and drinks and, and nice bhoga. But he takes it in the hand because there's pillar in between. So he's not able to put it in his mouth. So this is an analogy where it says that you have taken the gyan, but you have not applied it on yourself. Hence, it is not becoming vigyan. So the scriptural knowledge, the Brahminical culture, Brahmin means scriptural knowledge that he has learned. He is also applying it in his life. And by application of that knowledge, he realizes that knowledge and that gyan becomes vigyan. It happens with us as practicing devotees. Sometimes we hear the verse and we know about these verses. And sometimes suddenly we realize it. Oh, this is what was happening. And this is how, uh, this is truth in the scripture. This is what's happening with me. And you kind of relate with that particular verse. And you say, wow, this was so deep, so profound. And then now you don't need anybody else to convince you. You're convinced by the strength of your own realization, which is called Vigyanam. So Gyanam, Vigyanam. Like that. And Astik. Kim. So this word is opposite of Gnostic. Gnostic means somebody who is has no faith, no faith in scriptures, Gnostic, no faith in God. But the opposite of that is Astikyam. Gnostic is the extreme end of somebody who does not believe. And Astik is this end of somebody who believes, which means who has got firm faith in the scriptures. That is called Astikyam. The Brahman has firm faith in his scriptures. Ryanam Vigyanam Astikyam. After that, it says Brahma Karma Sabhava Jam. Then it says Brahma Karma Sabhava Jam, which means a Brahmin, he is a, a Brahmin should definitely know Brahman, Brahma Karma Sabhava Jam. His activities are such that he can realize Brahman. Let me see where Prabhupada has put some words here. Yeah, he says here. So, um, Brahma Janati Ti Brahmanaha. One who knows Brahma, he is called Brahman. So, at least to this extent, a Brahmin should know. Brahma Janati Iti. Brahma Janat Iti Brahmanaha. 
He penetrates the Brahman Jyoti, but devotees are beyond that. Because Vaishnavas, they not only penetrate the Brahman Jyoti, they also get to know about the personal form of the Lord, which is Krishna himself. So this is the beautiful verse that we all know from chapter 18th of Bhagavad Gita. Shama damas tapasocham shantir arjavam evacha gyanam vigyanam astikyam brahma karma sabhavajam such is the nature of the uh, of somebody who has got brahmanical qualities now in this particular verse we see asatthama although he was born in brahmanical culture but he did not behave like one and shri Prabhupada says that therefore it is not just by birth that you can become a brahmin <coughs> To become a Brahmin, one has to acquire the qualities of Brahmin. But then he also mentions that if you're born in a Brahminical family, your chances of becoming a Brahmin or acquiring Brahminical qualities are extremely high because you are surrounded by that culture. You have an example of your parents who are practicing Brahminical culture. As a child, you would adopt to that culture. But then Prabhupada also mentions in the same lecture I am giving, he's saying, Prabhupada is saying to his disciples, I am giving initiation to all your Westerners in Brahminical culture. I'm, I'm, I'm bringing you to this Pancharatrika Vidhi of a Brahminical culture. So your children, when they are born, they will be born to Brahmin parents. And when they are born to Brahmin parents, they have the first rights to, be, to gain Brahminical culture when they see the father and mother. He says here, you can see, just like this boy, automatically he's getting Vaishnav culture because he's associating with Vaishnavas. So this, this Brahminical culture is required. Now, not every power, every mantra is given to anybody, somebody who is tested with time. Therefore, in the, in the uh, historical events we see, that these kind of nuclear weapons, etc., were not given to somebody who was less than a Kshatriya. It was not given to Vaishyas, it was not given to Sudras, because they can misuse it. And so here we see how Asutthama is misusing his weaponry. He's using it, first he killed these five children of Pandavas, then he's using a nuclear weapon, and again, out of enormity, enviousness, he wanted to get rid of the last uh, hereditary uh, or last sign of life in the in the uh, in the family of Pandavas, Parikshit. So he wanted to kill Parikshit so that nobody remains to carry on with the the culture of Chatriyas they were practicing. So um, there's also a beautiful in chapter 20th of uh, Madhya Lila Chaitanya Chaitanya, with 59 Shloka also speaks about similar things in which uh, Prabhupada has quoted his words from Mahabharata. And because we are studying the part of Mahabharata, I thought it's very relevant. He's quoted his words, Dharmascha. Now we know most of the word from Bhagavad Gita Shloka hmm, or from chapter 18. Dharmascha Satyamcha Damas Tapascha. Amat Asharyam Hitish Tiksha Anusitiksha Nasuya Yagnascha Danamcha Jiti Shrutamcha Vritani Vai Dwadasha Brahmanasya means Brahmin has these 12 qualities. Brahmin must be perfectly religious, truthful, control senses, execute severe austerities, detached, humble. Tolerant, not envious of anyone. See this quality here. He must not be envy of anyone. And he must be expert in performing sacrifices. He must be fixed in devotional service and expert in knowledge of Vedas. These are the 12 qualifications of a Brahmin. So one of the qualities that he's not envious. He's not envy. And we clearly see how this Asatama is so envious. He became envious. And so he wanted to apply this nuclear weapon on, on a small child who is not even taking the birth. 
Now Krishna obviously wanted to kill this Aswatthama straight away or out of the plea of Draupadi, who felt that Aswatthama is the son of my guru, of our guru, of, um, of my husband's guru, and his wife is still living, she will feel the same pain of a mother that I am feeling by loss of my own children. Therefore, he should not be killed. And this, this compassion of Draupadi actually stopped Krishna to kill him in the way he wanted to give him punishment. Now imagine all those people in the material world who are taking the act of voluntarily killing the child in the womb. What kind of punishment Krishna would like to give these people? From this example, we can see how heinous is that act. There it was being done by the help of a mantra. Here it is being done help by the help of the doctors, so-called doctors. <laughs> hmm? So this is the advancement or modern science, which is, um, which is bringing people to such level of degradation that they are unable to work. What to talk about keeping up the Brahminical culture, but keeping up to the just humanity, just human culture. Hmm. So this Asotama, he did not know how to retract. So he has learned the powers, but he did not know how to retract the weapon. Similarly, these doctors and these mothers who are taking the step of killing the child in the womb, they don't know how to give life back to the child. And if they don't know how to give, how to give life back to the child, what right do they have to kill the child? What right? Like just like here, what right did Asafama had to release the weapon when he did not have the power or authority or he's forgotten about how to bring or retract this nuclear weapon? He chanted his hymns uh, of, of releasing the nuclear weapon. And this way, we all know the story what happened afterwards as it, as it will be discussed in the later part. Um, so this is what I thought about this verse, that how, um, what, is, what, is, what it means to be a Brahmin, what it means to receive such high quality mantras, what kind of responsibility a person holds when he's receiving such mantras in disciplic successions, where he becomes very responsible to execute these mantras. We discussed about the material mantras, and their power. We discussed about how ethereal existence within material platform is becoming slightly mystical through the help of wireless technology, etc. And um, what I would like to conclude with is that Prabhupada mentioned that this is just material mantras. These are just material mantras. But when we look at the powerful the spiritual sound vibration, which is not the part of this realm at all. The result of that mantra is love of Godhead. It's a destination that is beyond the realm, beyond the sun, beyond the moon, beyond the planetary systems, beyond the Brahman Jyoti. It is a realm where only this sound vibration can reach and this, vibration come, this sound vibration comes from. And that sound vibration we all know is Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. By chanting this mantra, it will invoke in our heart the dormant love of Krishna, the dormant love of God. And by achieving that love of God, we can be reinstated in a constitutional position which will then bring an end to the Bhava Sagar the world of death and birth, which is cyclical and is going for millions and trillions of lifetime. And that is the beauty of the Hare Krishna Mahamantra. So I'll, I'll close my talk with this now. If there's any question or comment, we can take that now. Hare Krishna.
Hare Krishna Prabhu ji, my humble obeisances unto you, all glories to Srila Prabhupada. It was so nice to hear from you. It was, you know, very powerful class, very nice, very, uh, what do you call it, from in-depth kind of knowledge. It was really nice to hear. Thank you very much, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Prabhu ji, Danvat Pranam. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Nila Vasana, Mataji Mataji. Yeah. Hare Krishna, Prabhu, Danvat Pranam. Um, can you explain to me what Brahman is? Because um, I read it somewhere that Brahman is also known as Atma. And um, we are also Atma, so we can be Brahman. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. So there are two words. One is Brahman. One mm -hmm. is Brahman. So Brahman is, you know, right? Satriya, Vaisya. Sudra Brahman. Is the no, material no, Prabhu, that you uh, Brahman. Brahman. You are talking about Brahman. So I'm trying Brahman, to get yeah. You are talking about Brahman. Hmm? Ishwar Ish or God can be realized in three phases. It is explained in Vedic literatures in three phases. One is um, Brahman form, other is Ishwara form, and other is Paramatma form. Hmm? So the Brahman form is as you as you said that brahman also means atma and paramatma and atma can mix with paramatma so this is called a philosophy of monoism for example there is sun and sun there are so there is sun god and there is sun planet and there is sun rays now if somebody touches sun rays he can say that this is sun but he has not really felt the sun he has not entered into sun and he's not even met the sun god. Similarly, the Brahman effulgence is coming from the personal form of the Lord, who is person, is Krishna. And his body, from his body, this effulgence of Brahman is coming. And we are also part and parcel of Krishna. These are my part and parcels. All these atmas are my part and parcels. In that sense, you can say, okay, atma, brahman, they're all one and same, paramatma. But they're all different also. Brahmeti, paramatmeti, bhagavan iti shabdhyate. So that bhagavan, which is the a person who possesses all the six bhagavan, six, possess, six opulences. Bhag means six opulence. Vaan means possessor. Possessor of six opulences all intelligence, all beauty, all renunciation, all strength, all uh, op, you know, possessions, etc. So we see that Atma, which is the soul, Paramatma, which is the God, and in between there is Brahman effulgence. And some uh, followers, uh, they, they think that Merging into the effulgence is the highest goal of life, which is Atma becomes one with Paramatma like that. But for those who are devotees of Vaishnavas, this is the lowest kind of liberation because in that liberation, one goes and gets neutralized, gets relief from the misery, gets situated in some kind of Anand. But it's not Paramanand because it's a phase of neutrality. But then beyond that, there is person God, Krishna, with whom we can have relationship in various rasas, and in that relationship, there is reciprocation, and there is there is uh, anand, which is beyond understanding of those who are merging into Brahman. So that is the meaning of this Brahman here. Is that clear, Mataji? I, this is a very big topic, and we can explain in an elaborate way. But this is a nutshell in in essence. Yes, thank you, Prabhu. And also one more and more question, Prabhu, if it's okay. Yes, please. What is a Pancharatrika Vidhi? We, we follow Narada Pancharatrika Vidhi is the form, is the, is the, is the literature or Pancharatrika, um, it's, it's a literature which tells us how to, how to worship the deities of the Lord when the Lord is present in the form of deities. Pancharatrika uh, Tantra, it is said. I don't know a lot about it. But all I know is that Sri Prabhupada has mentioned that we are following the Pancharatrika Vidhi of worshipping the deities. And um, this is coming from Srila Narada Dev. If anybody else has more knowledge about this subject, I request if they want to speak. Uh, 
Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Prabhuji, I, I don't have much knowledge, but a little bit I can share that, you know, like Narada Pancharatra Vidhi means because we are following the, you know, the deity worship according to the rules and regulations, which is set in the Narada Pancharatra Vidhi, because he, otherwise there is a Raghatmika or spontaneous love. For that, there is no rules and regulations. But for us, because we are neophyte, so we need to, you know, follow by the rules and regulations which is set by Narada. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, another thing, question from Mataji, like Atma, because, you know, like Atma is called also what you call Brahman, because we are part and parcel of God, because we, that's why we are also called Brahman. Yeah, because we are part and pa parts of Krishna. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yes, you quoted that verse. Yeah, you also explained it in that way, but you know, like. Yeah, nice. So another... I found something on Pancharaptika Krishna um, I, I Can I share that as well? Yes, Prabhu, yes. Okay. So here it is. Um, this is uh, Sri Prabhupada is explaining at the day of installation of Sri Sri Rukmani Dwarkanath uh, deities. So he's, he's saying here, uh, similarly, we have to worship the deity according to the authorized system. Just like in our Gorya Sampradaya, there's authorized system by the Goswamis. And there's a big book which is called Hari Bhakti Vilas. So everything is stated there, how the Vaishnava family should have their all function. It is called Vaishnavi Smriti, Shruti and Smriti. So we have to follow this regulation Shruti Veda Smriti means derived from Vedas. Srila Rupa Goswami says, Shruti Smriti Purana di Pancharatriki Vidhim Vina Aikantiki Hare Bhaktir Utpateb Alpate. We have heard this verse. I think whatever uh, Mataji you just explained, it is just giving further uh, elaboration on that. It says, without following the rules and regulations of Vedic injections, without reference to regulated principles mentioned in different Smritis, without reference to Puranas, without reference to Pancharatrika Vidhi. Pancharatrika Vidhi means it is a special concession for this age. Vedic Vidhi or Pancharatrika Vidhi is very authorized. Vedic Vidhi is especially meant for those who are highly elevated Brahmanas. In this age, it is accepted by fact, by Shastras, Kalau, Sodhya, Sambhava, and so on. So there is a mention that it is with the help of devotional service of the Lord that ignores the authorized Vedic literature like Upanishad, Puran, and Narad Pancharatra is simply an unnecessary disturbance in the society. So it looks like, as you rightly said, that if you don't follow the Raga Bhakti, because we're not in that platform right now, then we follow the method, Vidhi, the regulations of worshipping. And what we are following is the Pancharatika Vidhi. And that is what we can perhaps come to conclusion again. <laughs> Thanks very much, Prabhu, for Thank explaining you, Prabhu. Ele elaborately. Yeah, Thank wonderful. You very much. Thank you. I have just read his, yeah. his lecture. <laughs> Thank you for the wonderful class. Yeah, yeah, very, very wonderful. And thank you for the explanations as well. Yeah, Pancharatrika really was reestablished uh, by Bhakti uh, Saraswati Thakur um, and re-established within the Gaudiya Mat uh, in his lifetime because you know, we, we worship the deities in the mood of Lakshmi Narayan and the Panchrati Kavidi establishes that own reverence in our worship because we're not qualified to do it in spontaneous love, as you already said. Um, I just had a, you know, it's a, a slight realization on uh, and, and the, the power of mantra, you know, we, we in this material world are so contaminated that we place our faith in voice automation and Alexa and this and that. When we <laughs> chant that, we expect a reaction and we get a reaction and we have faith in that. Yet we're so fallen in a condition that we lose our faith in the power of the spiritual form of the, the most powerful mantras of the, of the name of the Lord. I mean, if even material mantras can invoke nuclear weapons, then what to speak of the spiritual mantras of the spiritual, the, the power and potency of the name of the Lord, 
yet we lose, we forget the, 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 the potency of that and the cleansing potency of that. And we're yet very ready to, to adopt the, uh, the material um, faith in, in things that are of, of no value. So yeah, we, we should reestablish and double down in our faith in the, the, the chanting of the Lord's name because it is so potent, so potent. So thank you for reminding us that through the class today, Guruji, really uh, important, the sound vibration of the Lord's name. Thank you, thank you, and thank you, Krishnani Mataji, for your explanations. Any other question, comment? Okay, it's already 8.45, so. Prabhuji, thank you very much for sharing Srila Prabhupada's you know, Brahmin initiation and explaining about the qualities of Brahmanas. That was, which, which lecture was that, Prabhu? I know you mentioned it before, but... Um, uh, will, it be, will it be in the slides or won't be? Vedabase, Mataji, Vedabase. I, yeah. If you want, I'll just uh, send you WhatsApp message. Yes, please. Yeah, please I'll do that. I'll do that. Sure. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you, dear devotees, for tolerating. <laughs> and thank you for coming again and again. So we shall meet you again next week. At least I'll come next week. Hare Krishna. One check out the Krishna. 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 Thank you, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. 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 Hare